and we know it's funny, we had talked to the parents. Uh, we had met in a private function here just about a week ago. We had met with the parents and we said, one of the things that you're going to find is that you will now have a different relationship with survivors from different families. And when you meet with them, something's going to feel odd. It's going to feel weird. And some of that is guilt sometimes because, you, you know, your friend who is their child and they've lost their child and now you're talking to them, you know, and you're thinking, well, maybe it should have been me and not them, him. And because you see the grief that they're going through and you want to try and lessen that impact for them. But it's a very unique relationship amongst survivors and family members of survivors and um, bonds that they extend even traditional types of contact that you have with people because you won't talk to someone for 15, 20 years and walk into a room with them and you have that instant connection that's established from way back when. So it's really hard to describe, but it's something that, you know, unless you've lived it, unless you experience it, you, you may not fully comprehend or understand the, the capacity and the gravity of it. It's, it's funny because I mean, we talk about Sheldon Kennedy, Peter Soberlack, and Bob Wilkie, who all came into town. And I kind of kept in contact with Bob Wilkie from time to time. But, you know, Sheldon and Peter, you know, very, very sporadic would I have any cross paths. And literally, when, they got, when I saw them at the airport on Sunday when they came into Saskatoon, it's like I hadn't, we hadn't skipped a beat. You know, it, you know, it just turned into a handshake and a hug. And right away, we had that unity. And it wasn't like you had to, oh, you know, what have you been doing for the last 15 years of your life? No, it's okay, we've got a mission here, we've got a cause. Let's see if we can help. We don't know how it's going to look, but let's see if we can do something to ease the pain that these families are going through. And it was, it was seamless. You know, it just went off and there was no script to follow. There was no timelines to follow, but it just clicked. And, and I really do think that part of that is because we had experienced it before. You know, and maybe, and this is on a different level now, but back then, you know, we were, we were victims of it. Now, we are in a potential to help victims of it. So, it was just part of spreading the message, you know, the message that you're not alone. There's been people that have, have pulled through this, you know, and we're four people that are a classic example of that. And we're here to field questions. If they have questions about, you know, what's this going to feel like five days from now? What's this going to feel like a year from now? What's it going to feel like a decade from now? And those are the things that we can potentially shine some light on to kind of help them through their journey. Well, there, there's so many different levels of, and so many different messages that have to be given. You have messages that should be given to the survivors and then you have messages that should be given to the families of survivors. And, you know, if there's a message that is consistent amongst both those mediums, it's, it's the fact that you have to move on and you have to be able to find something good out of a very tragic situation that helps you get to the next level. And that, that road can be diff different for everyone. But more importantly, it's the ability to, to recognize that as a result of something happening, uh, you have to be able to tell your story, you have to be able to move on, and you have to be able to use it in a positive light to help people that are going to be in similar circumstances in the future. The hockey rink was a big one, you know, but even before that, it was the support mechanisms that were in place. And, you know, I had a, at the time, I was, I was dating and I continued, I married that gal now. And, you know, she was a bit of a rock getting through that whole thing and the family structure and making sure that you had family to rely on in those times when you were thinking and questioning things. And then getting back into the hockey rinks and getting back into the, into the room and being around your peers and your support group and, and having the ability to go out there and whether it's, you know, skating and, and working up a sweat and being able to have that as a release mechanism, you know, getting back into that routine as quickly as possible and try and find some sense of normal life again.